This program is brought to you by the University of Michigan. For more information, visit umich.edu. Thank you and good afternoon. This is an enormous honor to be able to introduce today one of the most important creative minds of contemporary Poland, contemporary Europe, of the world today. Speaking of Filberta's talk today fits appropriately within two lecture series. The, uh, the School of Art and Design's Penny W. Stamps Distinguished Lecture Series and the annual Copernicus Lecture in Polish studies. Uh, as uh, I hope most of you know, the Copernicus uh, Endowment has existed here at the University of Michigan for uh, almost three decades now. And we've been holding these annual events, the annual Copernicus Lecture, uh, for this will be number 26. Uh, each year we've invited speakers, uh, politicians, philosophers, rock stars, uh, artists, filmmakers, uh, and, uh, and certainly our guest tonight fits within this long line of uh, distinguished, honored speakers. I say it's appropriate that this talk today fits within two series, because Mr. Liberta's work is thoroughly grounded in the distinctive traditions and contexts of late 20th and 21st century Poland, while at the same time speaking to artistic, cultural, social, political issues of transcendent importance as I think is testified by the uh, impressive size of this audience here today. Once back in 1997, in a public appearance when challenged about the appropriateness of his art by an angry viewer, uh, Zbigniew responded, quote, I'm from Poland, I've been poisoned. Those of us who have been lucky enough to have spent a bit of time with him over the past few days to get to know him a little better, can affirm that he has most certainly not been poisoned. Not only is he a kind and warm individual, but he's a living example of tolerance, broad-mindedness, compassion, and social commitment. But that he has in fact been shaped, albeit certainly not poisoned, shaped by his Polish background cannot be disputed. He grew up at a time when Poland was governed by a gradually decaying communist regime, and he experienced firsthand the combination of a public rhetoric that was superficially, and of course disingenuously, lofty, alongside a grinding reality marked by injustices both petty and profound. He himself was sent to prison during those years for producing artistic images that the authorities at the time labeled profane, a label that all too many critics representing a very wide range of ideological perspectives have used to describe his work. Perhaps it was precisely this experience that helped Zbigniew Ribera recognize that if one wants to bring uncomfortable truths into the public view, one must stand on that boundary between the appropriate and the inappropriate, between the proper and the vulgar, between the provocative and the offensive. In a world so often marked by a sharp divergence between rhetoric and reality, a divergence so typical of late communism, but no, all too typical of uh, today's world as well. The courage to cross those boundaries of propriety, the courage to shock, to disturb, are probably necessary components of any truly engaged public intellectual or artist. There's no doubt that Mr. Libera's art is challenging material in every sense of that word. But it's material that we cannot, that we must not turn away from because if Zbigniew Ribera's art disturbs us, it is only because it's bringing into our view aspects of the world and aspects of ourselves that we might not wish to look at, but which we must see. And see it you can, because uh, in conjunction with uh, this visit, uh, two Ann Arbor galleries uh, are devoting uh, space to, major, to a major retrospective of Zbigniew Ribera's work from the past several decades. 
the first such comprehensive retrospective uh, ever for this seminal artist. So I'd urge you all to strongly visit these two exhibits, uh, one at the uh, Jean-Paul Slusser Gallery uh, on North Campus, and the other just around the corner at uh, the Work Gallery on State Street. Before I turn over the microphone to our guest, I want to take a moment to thank all those who have made this possible, bringing uh, all this great art from Poland, setting up the two exhibits, arranging today's talk, organizing the symposium that will be held tomorrow afternoon that you just heard about. All this <clears throat> required an enormous, uh, really unprecedented collaboration between a wide variety of University of Michigan units and significant financial contributions from a, 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 an array of sources. So we all need to thank, in particular, the primary sponsors of these two events, uh, the, the primary two sponsors of these events, the University of Michigan Copernicus Endowment for Polish Studies, and the School of Art and Design's Roman J. Witt Visiting Faculty Program and Penny W. Stamps Distinguished Visitor Series. Additional support has come from the U of M Center for Russian and East European Studies, the College of Literature, Science, and the Arts, the International Institute, the Office of Vice President for Research, the Center for Contemporary Art at uh, the Ujazdowski Castle in Warsaw, the Fundacja Sztuka i Wyspółczesność in Warsaw, the Ministry of Culture of the Republic of Poland, and the Polish Cultural Institute of New York. As always, we are deeply indebted to the organizational and administrative mastermind who brought all this together, uh, Marysia Ostefan. And, <laughs> and now, it is my enormous privilege to introduce to you tonight's lecturer, Mr. Zbigniew Libera. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, by accepting the invitation to deliver this lecture, I've put myself in an awkward position of someone making a self-presentation. It's awkward because it's difficult to speak about your own art in at least a relatively objective and credible way. One needs here a factor distancing the author from the subject and at the same time an objective presentation in order to not offend your good judgment. A reference to the press could be such a factor. Press articles have a documentary value, being products of specific time and place. Even if they often distort the picture, they constitute a historical record with which we can study specific spaces and events. A reference to the press will also enable us to trace back from the distance, the development of democratic forces manifesting themselves through art. Let me therefore propose a presentation of my art as it was being described in the Polish and foreign, foreign press in the 80s, 90s, and at the beginning of the new century. So please first, a slide. Uh, in the late 60s and in the course of the 70s, there uh, there developed in Poland an independent, you could say, underground artistic scene animated by neo-avant-garde artists. One of its manifestations were low-circulation publications distributed in the interested circles, chiefly artistic ones. The law permitted the publication up to 200 copies for internal use. Some of those publications were of one of na nature, Others were published in a uh, cyclical basis for a shorter or longer period of time. At the turn of the 70s and 80s, when I became more interested in the art, the la landscape was quite clear. On one hand, the traditional art world and its institutions kept alive by the communist regime uh, with its galleries and official idols. And on the other hand, the so-called second cir circulation a kind of artistic underground with its galleries, its events, and cult personalities, as well as its own information network, archives and documentation centers, and its own value hierarchies. Next, please. In the 80s, the introduction of the martial law 
which let me remind you, uh, saw, uh, uh, saw the functioning of all of the official artistic institutions temporarily suspend perforce, but the neo-avant-garde publications in a spotlight. Uh, put the neo-avant-garde publications in a spotlight. You could say that the center went underground. One of the particularly bustling centers of activity was a loft of one of the townhouses at Piotrkowska Street in the industrial city of Łódź, a place that sub subsequently became known as Strich, uh, in English, Attic, the Attic. In 1983, an artistic group called Łódź Kaliska started publishing there an artistic magazine called Tango. The way the tango was made was for each contributing artist to produce with their own means one or more pages in 200 copies, after which uh, the contributed pages were bound together to produce 200 copies of the magazine. Therefore, each of the 200 copies included a set of original works bound together in a common cover bearing the tango logo and the inscription, Aristocrats of the All Countries Unite. Next, please. When I first saw the tango in 18, 1983, it was when a friend visited me in a prison in the town Hrubieshov, where I was serving 18 month sentence on the basis of the legally non-existent Article 48 of the Martial Law Decree introduced by the General Jaruzelski in December 13, 1981. I had been sentenced for a printing underground publications. Next, please. The photographs I made at the Hrubieshov prison were later, uh, later published by Jerzy Truszkowski in the magazine Exit in 1996. Here you can see me and, uh, and my friend in a, in a cell. Uh, next, please. Here is my contribution to the one uh, consecutive uh, issues of Tango after I had been rela released from prison following a general amnesty in 1983. Next, please. And the next, please. Another uh, untitled publication presenting the works of the artists mentioned on the cover. Uh, next, please. My contribution to this publication presenting manifestations of private communications in the public space, limited extremely to the form of handwritten leaflets passed on the road signs and the bus stops during the martial law period. Another publication, the pretext for which was the presentation of Andrzej Partum Awards. One of the prizes went to my video called Intimate Rights. I made the film in 1984, documenting in maximally concise form just 20 minutes, 12 minutes of length, my six month long period of caring of a dying old lady. I did, edited the material using the simplest amateur means without sound. Uh, the consecutive sent scenes show the routine care activities such as feeding, diaper changing, feeding again, and diaper changing again. The main characters are my then 96 years old grandmother and myself 25 years old, of age at that time. The film was shot as a couple of months before Grandma's death in 1984. The first public screening took place only two years later in 1986. Uh, some of the things happened in a, in, a, in a second circulation were getting through the pages of the official press. Here you see the, one of the first articles about my art by Krzysztof Jurecki, published in magazine The Student in 1988. As it later turned out, the magazine had been set up by the secret police to better penetrate the young, arti young artist community. The poor quality photo with the article comes from my uh, 1987 video film, How to Train Little Girls. The, mater the material here was an amateur family movie footage showing a four years old girl playing with her aunt. Uh, when played back in slow motion, the overwise banal footage reveals gestures 
that go unnoticed in everyday life. Here the girl plays uh, with her aunt, uh, who is present on the screen only with, with her hands. The hands introduce the girl to various new objects, such as pearl necklace. Uh, they instruct the girl how to use the, those new objects. In the successive scenes, the hand suggests ever new objects, while at the same, <laughs> while at the same time con controlling and co uh, correcting the mistakes. In, uh, in the late 1980s, I moved to Warsaw and established a close collaboration with artist Zofia Kulik as her model for, uh, for her photographic works. Here is one of the early results of that collaboration, a postcard sent out by Kulik with greetings for a new year 1989. The reproduction comes from an article published in uh, 1996 in the magazine Exit. In 1993, to everyone's surprise, including my own, I was invited to participate in a, a prestigious Aperto 93 exhibition at the Venice Biennale. One of the works presented at the Aperto was a publishing project for a magazine called Headline by Heike Kempken, Reinhard Schumacher and Vincent Taven. The authors asked the artists participating in a biennale to contribute text and photographs to be included in a magazine. My contribution was a 1984 work called Mystical Perseverance. The video comes with the following text. The recorded activity is of magical and mystical nature independent of any known form of religion, magic or art. It neither builds or upholds any system. It takes place daily irrespective of the current state of political, social, cultural, financial, official and unofficial affairs. It takes place always in one at the same place and it's always experienced by one at the same person, the sick, blind, and bedridden Regina G. My presence was accidental and went unnoticed by the experiencing person. The recorded action is the major element of in Regina G existence. Apart from a mental activity, it is the only thing she can do by herself. It is her only form of contact with the outside world. The activity originated in a ritual of saying the rosary prayer, which eventually took another form that of rotating the rosary around the neck. After a time, Regina G changed the direction and the way the rosary was rotated, which resulted in a loop around her neck. So the rosary, as a dangerous thing, was taken away. Its place was taken by the first object at hand, which happened to be a chamber pot. The recorded activity consists in persistent turning of the pot around its axis, while at the same time it retains it, its primary function depending on the need, it becomes either a medium or a receptacle for experiments. Since 1990, the work has been presented in a form of installation using the original furniture and the medicaments left by the uh, Regina G. Uh, the work has been also presented in the US as a part of the exhibition Beyond Belief at the MCA Chicago and also at the ICI Philadelphia. In 1996, the pop culture magazine Machina, as the first of, of its ilk, included contemporary art in its scope of interest. Thus my name appeared on the cover next to that of Michael Jackson. Especially, especially for the purpose or on the occasion of the presentation of my artistic pra pra practice, the magazine created a new section called Public Enemy Number no. One. The interview uh, conducted by Editor-in-Chief Bogna Świątkowska was followed by photographs of works of the Corrective Devices series, which were on display between June and uh, September 1996 at the CCA Ujazdowski Castle in Warsaw. Uh, next year, 1997, the Norwegian newspaper Dagbladet published a text and photographs report on corrective devices exhibition at Oslo Gallery Vang. Uh, that same year, Nigel Warwick's article in the international art magazine Flash Art started a stream of publications about the 
works of the Corrective Devices series, the LEGO Concentration Camp. The LEGO Concentration Camp consists of seven cardboard boxes of various sizes, each in three copies. The box sizes correspond with the sizes of the standard LEGO products, packagings. This is how the work was originally exhibited at the CCA Wiazdowski Castle in Warsaw. Each box contains a set of building, building bricks that uh, can be used to build a concentration camp features presented on a pack shot photo on the packaging. All the elements included, included the boxes and uh, depicted on the packaging photos have been made by Lego, borrowed from the company's standard products or slightly modified by me in the desired direction. Each box bears the following inscription in the upper left corner. This work of Zbigniew Libera has been sponsored by Lego to reflect the fact that the piece, uh, pieces donated by the company have made the project possible. Three larger boxes contain architectural uh, features typical for the concentration camp. The first set represents a miniature camp set, chiefly the prisoner barracks and the barbed wire fence with the gate and watchtowers. Uh, characteristic roofs of the barracks and watchtowers require the special stylization in the spirit of the simplified synthesis ty typical for Lego products. Like with the real Lego products, where the police station, for instance, uh, isn't a miniature model of some specific station or specific police force, so here the whole work doesn't try to imitate any specific concentration camp but rather represents a certain icon of the 20th century. The contents of the second box uh, represent the crematorium, the element perhaps most powerfully within the scope of, uh, of this work referring to Holocaust. Still, like in the previous set, the building's architecture doesn't emulate any specific or original. Another box contains a warehouse building filled with the prisoners' personal belongings. Uh, the underside of, of this box features photographs depicting accumulations of the objects of a single type, uh, caps, hats, etc. As we have seen, the three larger boxes contain constructions typical for the concentration camp architecture. The remaining four smaller boxes contain the figures uh, characteristic for the place. As I already mentioned, the whole work has been produced using ready-made elements borrowed from the various Lego sets. The prisoners, for instance, are played by a smiling skeletons from the pirate set. Another figure are the guards, played by a slightly modified figurines from the police station set. The next box and its content presents a high rank officer, the camp commander. Even the normal smile of the Lego skeleton of his face has turned into a grimace. He is dressed in a uniform resembling that of the Soviet general, medals and all. The camp commander represents here the figure of evil embod embodied with the uh, wielding un unlimited power. His shadow is a five-pointed star. And the last figure in, in this Lego set is another tormentor, a psychopath doctor who conducts medical experiments on the prisoners, a caricature of the scientist using the power of politics and knowledge to set the social norms. And the final glance of the whole work as it is usually exhibited. Uh, a review of the exhibition at the Gallery Farsco in Copenhagen, published June 3, 1997, in the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, whose author, Dirk Schumer, presents the LEGO concentration camp against the background of the debate, then still unsolved, on the planned Holocaust monument in Berlin, suggesting that the mass production of my project would be a good solution to the problem of historical memory involved in a Holocaust monument. On May 19, 1997, the Los Angeles Times published 
publishes an article by Dean Murphy describing the story of how I was invited to prepare an exhibition for the Polish Pavilion at the Venice Biennale and how I subsequently decided to reject the offer after the Pavilion's curator refused to show the Lego concentration camp. Paradoxically, my refusal to take uh, part in the Venice Biennale earned the work perhaps even more publicity than in the case it would be actually being exhibited. Germany's Der Spiegel published a full-size story about it, devoting another two to the, to the Biennale itself. It was only at that point that the Lego was uh, noticed by the Polish press. Here, for example, a series of polemical texts published successively over a month by the opinion weekly Politica. The authors included Piotr, Piotr Sarzyński, the art critic, Politica's art writer and initiator of the debate, Piotr Ripson, then curator at the CCA Warsaw, and Jacek Krulak, graphic designer and commentator. Uh, the general tone of the debate on LEGO concentration camp in 1997 is best illustrated by this barometer page from the hip British magazine The Face. Next year, I showed the correcting devices at the Guy McIntyre Gallery in New York Soho, as, as mentioned in Gregory Volk's article in Art in America number no. 3 from 1999. Uh, the photo shows my work, The Doll You Love to Andres from uh, 1998. This exhibition is a good opportunity to present some of the other correcting devices. Here is a Ken's, Ken's End, a doll made in 25 copies. Ken's End, the way it is presented in the galleries. Another work is called Body Master. It is a playset for nine years old boy uh, that is in fact a copy of an adult weight trainer. The only difference are very light weights made out of paper. The device come with a human, uh, a human, a human stand cut out depicting a hypothetical muscle development of the boy that age. In reality, such a muscle build-up would be impossible or would result in a permanent physical disability. The use, however, of a paperweight means it is safe for the body master users to play bodybuilding. And finally, placebo, made to my order at the pharmaceutical plant, a medication in a form of suppositories. The medication was made in a series 550 units each unit contains four placebo suppositories. The following years, meanwhile, were not too proof favorable for uh, art in Poland. Here is a famous movie actor, Daniel Obryski, spectacularly ruins his own image from a movie where he played an SS man, part of Piotr Uklański exhibition, The Nazis. The photo is from the 19 November 2000 issue of the daily newspaper Życie Warszawy. Here in turn, Witold Tomczak, deputy to the Polish parliament, ruins a work by Maurizio Catalan, exhibited at the Zachenta National Gallery, as documented by the super express photographer Piotr Grzybowski in the tabloid daily December 22, 2000 issue. The conservative press started carrying uh, numerous articles aggressively attacking contemporary art and, uh, and the artists. In 2000, shocked by the rhetoric of those texts, I compiled quotes taken from 16 different articles into a text that I called also a quote from a conservative uh, newspaper, Arts Cold War with the Society. The, next, the text constitutes the theoretical framework for an exhibition presenting the practice of artists most fre frequently commented upon the conservative press to spare you the in ingestible mixture of slogans, dog dogmas, and myths. Let me read to you only two characteristic fragments. I quote now. Let's start with the question, how did it all begin? In the 18th century, as church authority collapsed, the new type of mentor emerged, willing to fill the gap 
and, again, and gain influence over the pub public. This, the secular intellectual could be a diced, a skeptic or an atheist, like a bishop or a parish priest. He was prepared to patronize humanity on how it should live, how it should live. And so the Enlightenment at the, at the time of school polishing in Poland, the monitor with its circle theory, uh, the father from Warsaw, the greater uh, the obscurantism. Let's, do, let's go there with the mission of opening up the minds by passing of knowledge from the wiser patriots to the less wise interlocutors. No, gentlemen, you won't polish us. You've been pursuing your mission for 200 years now, and you are still alone. Only the titles have been changing in which you publish your letters to humanity from Monitor to Gazeta Wyborcza. And the other quotation. Uh, today the progressive artist is the best, a kind of politician, commentator or worker. Ethereal substance has transformed into a flesh and bone. Sin since that time, the artist has been uh, subject to the vulgar pressure of the public opinion, savoir vivre and the penal code. And in the meantime, the death penalty is revoked because men of progress have very sensitive hearts for those who have erred. And the last one, I don't want my taxes to be spent on Wajnia Gallery in Gdańsk, just I wouldn't like them to be spent on gay clubs or Rolling Stones concert. This is not prudery, or <laughs> but just protest against the relaxation of the social norms, said Joanna Fabisiak, deputy of the Conservative Solidarity Election Action. The exhibition Cold War took place at the Kraków uh, of the theater, Wajnia, Wajnia Theater Association. And as, uh, as was to be expected, was chiefly commented upon the bourgeois press. Uh, a, re a report from the exhibition featuring interviews and artist photo on the front page of the Gazeta Krakowska Daily. In the autumn of the same year, 2001, the Rzeczpospolita Daily reported about another protest against art. This time it was the Paulin monks at the Jasna Góra Monastery in Częstochowa who were protesting against the exhibition Irreligion, organized by the gallery Atelier 340 in Brussels. Uh, the quote from, from this article, the exhibitions are to show the attitude of Polish artists of the last uh, 50 years towards religion. The exhibition features works by some of the most outstanding artists such as Władysław Hasior or Bronisław Linke. Part of the exhibition, including some of the shocking works, are presented in, at two churches in an effort by the Belgian church to demonstrate its openness and willingness to dialogue. The Polish Paulin monks, in turn, are outraged both by exhibition as well as by London fashion show by the controversial designer Arcadius, uh, where the images of Christ, Holy Mary and religious symbols were displayed in a blasphemous way. And here is my uh, uh, work, Universal Penis Expander from 1995, presented at the Notre Dame de Lourdes Church in Brussels as a part of the irreligion exhibition. One of the direct results of the Pauline protest, it didn't even take any higher instance intervention, was the dimissal, dimissal, dimissal from the di directoral position at Warsaw's uh, National Museum of the exhibition initi initiator and curator, uh, Dr. Kazimierz Piotrowski, as well as his assistant, Piotrowski. Uh, Piotrowski, as well as two other artists whose works had been uh, commented uh, as a particularly blasphemous, were proclaimed as blasphemers at the Polish Episcopate, Episcopate's official letter during Sunday masses at church, churches across Poland. And finally, a case that would merit a lecture of its own, for which we obviously have no time here. The court uh, trial of artist Dorota Nieznalska officially indicated and sentenced by the Gdańsk District Court for insulting religious feelings, an appeal 
has since uh, been lodged and the trial continues. The photo shows the defendant, defendant and her lawyer during the court session. And here, as the caption says, Catholics gathered in the front of the courtroom during another trial against Dorota Nieznalska. And in fact, members and supporters of the League of Polish Families, the party that sued Nieznalska without even seeing the work itself. And here, at first sight, another Polish Catholic protest against contemporary art, but wait, it is Piquet outside the Jewish Museum in New York City against the exhibition Mirroring Evil, presented there in March 2002. Here we see on the front page of the New York Times culture section uh, of that year, the Nazi images again slashed with this word by an actor at the Zahenta Gallery, Warsaw, below a fam familiar detail from the Lego concentration camp. And here, from the pages of the New York Times Magazine, an article very similar to those published in the Polish press. Here is a text called Our Problem with Modern Art from the Polish magazine Respublika. Uh, here too, like in the New York Times article, there appears the mythical shadow of Marcel Duchamp, in both cases playing a role of kind of patron on inconvenient art. This is well illustrated by the title of this graphic commentary to the exhibition by Art Spiegelman, Duchamp is our misfortune. Spiegelman appears here uh, for no accident. His mouse drawings were one of the inspirations or even material for copying in the work uh, on that part of the exhibition that Spiegelman is commenting on. Thus a certain circle is completed. Even during the, the preparations for Mirroring Evil, I gave a long interview over the phone in several parts over the course of several weeks for one Israeli um, magazine. I presented uh, the article here not only because of its exceptional length, as my Israeli friends told me this had not happened to any other visual artist before, but also because of, let's say, nostalgic reasons. The text started uh, a series of more favorable pub publications about the LEGO project. Here is the cover of the uh, uh, art magazine Art Eon, which is published in Poznań. And here is the uh, cover of a uh, literary magazine, uh, Literatura na świecie, World Literature, a long established quarterly uh, specialized in presenting mainstream international literary writings. And here we have a cover of Ukrainian pop culture magazine Nash. In 2004, the influential opinion weekly Politica publishes a ranking of the most important cultural events since the democratic changeover of 1989, ranking Lego concentration camp in the second place. Uh, the first place was awarded to, to emergence of private auction, auction houses in 1989. Here is the Lego. And finally, the January 26 page from Tear, tear Away Calendar by the German art publisher Taschen, which, which chose this way to reflect on Lego concentration camp. But there was a problem. It was okay uh, for my work to be reproduced on magazine covers or in the calendars, but it wasn't so uh, for the galleries. I had been taboo for municipal and governmental art institutions alike for many years then. In fact, the CCA in Warsaw only this year renewed its interest in my art after nearly 10 years of silence. In 2002, it turned out that a good solution to that problem was to publish works directly in the press that wanted. Uh, this way I could reach both those who usually came to my exhibitions as well as those who never go to the gallery. Here is the cover of the news and culture weekly magazine Przekrój uh, of an average circulation of 40,000 copies in publication non-stop since 1945. 
The cover features a fragment of, the, of, the of my photograph, The Workers, promoting a larger ma material on my art inside the issue, titled Scandal Against Memory. The mini presentation in Przekrój bore the subtitle Libera Insults with a Smile. Besides the photo of the workers, which is presented here in full, I also showed this picture called The Residence. If looking at the picture, you sense the presence of another one, speaking as, as if from underneath, or you can even concretize it and maybe name, name it. Uh, you're right. It's that picture that I call the negative. And so the one you are looking at, uh, at now is the positive. That is the principle of, of, of these photographs and of this photograph and the previous one, the workers. Together with a number of the other pictures that you, you will see in a moment, they form a series called positives. Here is another positive called Nepal. Uh, I think that, no, that not everyone recalls the negative, which is what I call the original. It depends on the capacity and scope of the viewer's image memory. Uh, the meaning of this positive, for instance, is obvious for everyone with an even limited knowledge of 20th century po uh, Polish history. For someone, however, who living in a different space and time has been feeding his memory with other images, it will be but a photo of cyclists removing a road barrier. For a certain American journalist who saw the premiere presentation of the positives at the private-owned Atlas Stucki Gallery in Łódź in February 2004, only some positives explode with negatives, as one critic likes to call it. But among those few was also this one called the miracle. Nothing surprising for me, but in Europe it was precisely this picture that the viewers had most trouble finding the negative for. How about you? The last picture of this series is the positive of the 1976 photo called Return from Entebbe Ben Gurion Airport, uh, made by Misha Baram. For the second time, the positive appears on the cover of Przekrój. This time, however, the date and the historical context are important. It is April 13, 2003, two days after US tanks rolled into Baghdad. A caption explains in small print, this has no, not really happened. And in larger print, it's only Bush's dream. Despite those assurances, it did really happen. And uh, that was thanks to the magazine's marketing machine that for a week made a photo omnipresent in billboard form uh, in the public space in, of the Poland's largest cities. And here we see the building at the De Gaulle Square in the very center of Warsaw with a huge blow up of the Przekrój cover and one of many light boxes installed at, at the Warsaw's, uh, Warsaw's bus, bus stops. And here we have another photo from the session showing Arab women welcoming US soldiers were given the layout typical for Przekrój's news section and making it easy to mistake, uh, mistake them for the real ones. At the last series of works I'd like to present to you today is called The Masters. The series con uh, consists of five press articles from various influential Polish newspapers and magazines, except one which, which go, uh, come from 1983, all come from the 90s and the beginning of this century. The articles present in a form of interviews or critical texts the profiles of several outstanding artists of the Polish neo-avant-garde movement of the 70s. Outstanding not only uh, in my view, uh, though those are in fact my artistic masters, 
um, taken together, they form a narrative about the time and the various communities and their problems, and also about art itself, its achievements and their impact on the present. The catch is that those articles have never been really published and their protagonists remain relatively obscure and unappreciated. What we see here is the double page spread from the weekly magazine Politica with an article about unusual art of Anastasy Wisniewski. Let me quote. The Zachenta exhibition restores to collective memory of the Polish avant-garde of the 70s. Without its protagonists, artists such as Anastasy Wisniewski, art would have uh, to this day been stuck in the in the chains of sterile, far from the life formalism. Like the article itself, which in fact has never been published, so the exhibition confirmation cited in, in, in it has never really taken place, nor has the art of Anastasy Wisniewski so far been granted the honor of critical analysis and presentation to the broad public. The next article, from the Gazeta Wyborcza's weekly magazine supplement starts on the cover. Contemporary artists have not been honored this way in the Polish press before. The interview with Jan Świdziński entitled Art in a Context of Kurpie and New York is preceded by following introduction. Jan Świdziński is an artist and theoretician who has earned a place in the history of international art this year, he celebrates the 20th anniversary of formulating the principles of, of the so-called contextual art. Next week, at the CCA in Warsaw, will open a retrospective exhibition of Świdziński work, accompanied by the International Art Seminar of Contextual Art. Like in a previous case, the exhibition and the seminar never really took place, and the interview itself was fake too. The text for, for this and the other articles were written on the basis of existing and already published genuine interviews or were written to, uh, in accordance with professionally uh, consul, uh, consulted knowledge specifically for this project. They were su sub subsequently subjected to a multi-stage editing process, first by an art historian, then by two newspaper writers, and finally by myself, to achieve the effect of a well-written press text, and at the same time, critical ac accuracy. That is what texts about art usually lack, being either overloaded with specialist terminology and written in a steered language, or tending to oversimplify things. Another article is devoted to the memory of the Warsaw-based uh, Dadaist and poet Andrzej Partum, who died in 2003. The remembrance was featured on uh, Gazeta Wyborcza's front page. Uh, the way you usually honor those belongs to the pantheon of the national authority, authority figures, where Partum surely deserved a place. Partum's pioneering and difficult art never received the proper critical recognition in its time. Afterwards, it had to give way to more explicit, explicit political communications. It seemed to me that in the 90s, when, the, when an artistic uh, genre emerged with its root, roots in, among other things, Partum's practice, there came to the time for a closer presentation and interpretation of its art. Only who would be su supposed to do it? With the Public Institutions Week, and the art market not existent and the authoritative literature absent, the role of opinion making had to be assumed by the mass media above all the press. And here is the funny quote, a page from Gazeta Wyborcza reproduced in the magazine Activist. Uh, Gazeta Wyborcza's remembrance of Andrzej Partum, titled Insulted Art in the Poetry Office, con continues. And this is the quotation. A rebellious, submissive to neither the times nor the public, he never gained recognition or fame. He was a unique artist uh, whose vision of art went beyond his time. The article briefly remembers uh, the work of the author of Poetry Office. 
and uh, his turbulent life, Partum was a poet, provocateur, and a brilliant improviser, as well as a critic of the institutionalization of art. Among the other things of the, of the, of the Foxhall Gallery and the art of Tadeusz Kantor, the article featured archival, archival photos of the late artist, as well as a simple sample of his poetry in the, in the shape of the positive manifesto artistic nihilism. Uh, 1983 issue of, of the Tribuna Ludu Daily, a communist uh, newspaper. Uh, in, the, in the in the city section, reporting on the weekend's cultural events in Warsaw, next to an article on painting uh, and the graphic arts in the DDR, which is here. Uh, we can see a photograph. Uh, a photograph is featured with the following legend. On the ninth of this month, outside the Stodoła club, uh, student club, Jacek K. committed an act of hooliganism using a toy gun on the person of Tadeusz Kantor, the People's Republic of Poland principal avant-gardist. The surprised artist said, in your age, you have to have your own admirers or to be an admirer of someone else. On that day, Tadeusz Kantor was shot dead with a toy gun, symbol symbolically dethroned. And the last article of, of, of the series presents the profile of Zofia Kulik, an artist otherwise known, but as in turns, only turns out only partially. The first 20 years of her artistic career, Kulik spent as a half of the Kwiek Kulik artistic duo, the other half being Przemysław Kwiek. Their pioneering work also remains largely undiscovered and inaccurately interpret, interpret and positioned. As be, uh, befits an article in a genuine newspaper, this article, like several of the others one, of other ones, features advertisements, which you have surely already noticed. As it's easy to find out, those are genuine, genuine ads, which in fact help it to finance the project. Here you see an, an ad for an upmarket Warsaw hairdresser franchise. In the other cases, the ads were for global brands like Nokia or Mercedes. And what you see here looks like another part of the master series, but it is in fact the cover of the genuine issue of Gazeta Wyborcza Duży Format Weekly Supplement from February 2004 with a photo of my face advertising an extensive interview featured inside by Katarzyna Bielas and Dorota Jarecka called No One is Safe with the Artist. Uh, having inter in interpreted the masters as a proposition, the Gazeta initiated on the pages of its duży format and woman oriented Wysoki Obcasy weekly supplements a series of larger texts presenting the profiles of contemporary artists. Following the one about myself, there are also appeared texts about Zofia Kulik and Katarzyna Kozyra. Uh, in an editorial, Marius Szczygieł, Szczygieł writes, and this is the quotation, Zbigniew Libera has been accused of, ma of making fun of things no sane person should be making fun of of transforming the Holocaust into a pop culture commodity. And yet, his work was precisely, precisely a warning that such a thing happening. The game of evil is being played in our, uh, in our homes with the TV remote control. Over dinner, we switch from the site of ma mass graves in Iraq to that of the terror victims in Jerusalem. Zbigniew Libera is an example of, of art's critical commitment. Few appreciate that in Poland. And after the Lego uh, concentration camp, no state gallery wanted to talk to Libera anymore. In the interview, Libera says that every society needs someone who can do things the ordinary citizen is prohibited, 
uh, from doing. Like the scientist, the artist is allowed to experiment and transgress. As the creative factor, uh, he or she has the right to do it, even if no one has given it to them on the paper. It's an unwritten social agreement. I hope you will also make such an agreement with Zbigniew Libera. The end of the quotation. But I think it could also be argued that this right should be extended to all of us, not just only artists. And ending this lecture with these words, let me once again thank you for your attention.